everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Welcome back to Team Recorder. Today I'm curious if you can hear the difference between recorders tuned in 440 and recorders tuned in 415 or other tunings. What does this mean? We're going to get a bit nerdy today and I'm going to take you through it, but first, let's listen. the first one I played sounded higher in general. This is because the A on this instrument is tuned to what we call modern pitch 440 hertz. Whereas this recorder is tuned a semitone lower in what we now call baroque pitch, the A is equal to 415 hertz. What does this mean? Why do we want this? I'm gonna tell you. I'll break it down a bit for you. When you play a note like an A, it creates a sound wave that goes up and down, or oscillates. The number of oscillations per second is the frequency, how high or low it is. This frequency is measured in a unit called hertz. Are you still with me? These days in Western classical music, we have standardized the pitch of the A as 440 hertz. And we use this as a reference point to tune our instruments so that when we play together, everyone kind of sounds in tune. Has it always been like this? No, definitely not. The standardized A of 440 only came about in the last century. Before that, pitch was not standardized. There is evidence to suggest that over Europe, the A varied from 380 hertz to 480 hertz. How do we know this? Well, a lot of wind instruments, recorders, organs and tuning forks still survive today. Today, we often think of early music as being played in low pitch, but it was also played high. Let's give you a bit of a taste of that. a soprano in 415, low pitch. Change this over, a soprano in 440, modern pitch, and a soprano in 466, high Renaissance pitch. I know the pitches were different, but could you also hear the difference in tone color? Of course, 415, 440, 466 are all modern day compromises. Um, in early music, we have evidence to suggest the A was a whole spectrum of things. Nowadays, we've landed on these three points because they're all a semitone apart. It's practical. You can also easily combine Renaissance pitch and Baroque pitch with each other because they're a tone apart. Half your ensemble can play in G and the other half in F. And it's perfectly possible to mix these tunings in this way. Wind instruments sound really nice tuned high because it makes them more brilliant and sparkly. Strings sound nice tuned low because then it's really warm. There's not so much tension in the string. Singers prefer to sing low because it's, you know, easily reachable from the voice. A very nerdy resource for you that I'm sure you'll love. The recorder maker Adrian Brown has compiled a database of all the original Renaissance recorders in museums. It's being updated all the time. But you can see from this database that a lot of them are in sharp keys, C sharp, F sharp, um, which actually suggests that they were tuned a semitone higher at this higher Renaissance pitch. <laughs> Wait, this would actually mean that my voice flute in D at 415 is the same pitch as my Renaissance tenor in C at 466, right? Of course, they're gonna sound very different as well because they're different models, different builds. standardized pitch as modern is 440, baroque is 415, 
and Renaissance is 466. Are there other ones too? Yes, of course. There are also recorders built where the A is 392. This is a whole tone lower than our modern pitch. I don't have any 392 instruments to play you, but they exist. Adrian Brown has even built Renaissance recorders where the A is 520 hertz. This is not one, but three semitones higher than modern pitch. There's a whole interesting story for how he got there. Um, I'll put a link in the description to that. There are also classical period instruments that are built where the A is 430, kind of a quarter tone flatter than our modern pitch. Again, I don't have anything to play you, but they exist. And in the end, all of these choices are modern day compromises. We try to be as historically accurate as we can, but we can never be 100% accurate. And it has to be practical. Um, we have to be able to play with other people. It's also an artistic choice. Do you want to play your music with the kind of low, warm sound of the Baroque pitch, the sparkly, brilliant sound of the Renaissance? I'll show you a couple of my choices. So, as a professional recorder player, you kind of have to have your modern pitch and your Baroque pitch altos. If I'm playing modern repertoire, I play this one. If I'm playing Baroque, I play this one. <laughs> it in one instrument. For my Ganassi Soprano I actually have two joints, 440 modern, 415 baroque. And even though it's essentially the same instrument you do hear the different character. Here's an interesting one, this is my Raffi tenor. It's a renaissance model but I chose to buy it in 440 modern pitch. I bought this instrument specifically so that I could play early music with other people, non-recorder players. Um, don't be offended, but for a while I had a group where we played medieval music on clarinet, accordion, double bass and singer, all modern. <laughs> and believe it or not, I also like to play contemporary music on this. It's beautiful, lyrical, you can play very high, nice and soft. On the other hand, with my trio, we chose to get our whole consort handmade for us at high renaissance pitch. I don't have them all here, but we have a family of seven of these instruments that we just play with each other. So we chose for that bright, high renaissance pitch. And I have a modern bass recorder, bassett recorder, that I actually bought with two middle joints. 440 and 415. When would you need to play 415 on your bass recorder? The CP Bach Trio Sonata for bass recorder and viola, of course. It has been useful a couple of times. And just to throw a little spanner in the works at the end, the whole video I've been talking about modern pitch A is 440, but somewhere it's also 442? Yes. Um, it seems to be that in America and the UK we use 440, in Europe we tend to use 442. That tiny difference in pitch just makes it a little bit brighter and louder for our big concert halls. I'm here with my tuner, I'm going to see if you can tell the difference. And the last, last question. Why do we bother to tune in 440 and 415 when we can just play up or down a semitone? In fact, why don't we just say we're playing an A or G sharp? That is a valid point. But I'm now going to play you the same pictures on the different tuning systems and you really hear the difference. Sounds very strong and nice. weak and weird. <laughs> By having these different tuning systems it enables you to always play in nice keys with strong fingerings rather than weird accidental filled cross fingerings. So sometimes it's better to move your frame of reference than the names of the notes. Does that make any sense? I think this might have been my nerdiest video to date. 
Let's end with a quiz. I'm gonna play you three short snippets. I want you to close your eyes, listen, and think, is this in modern pitch, low Baroque pitch, or high Renaissance pitch? Let's go. <laughs> given you a lot of information and I want to make it very clear a lot of these are big generalizations. I love conversations about tuning and pitch so feel free to open it up in the comments. As always you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face in the corner. Down here you can choose to support the channel by subscribing to our Patreon. Thank you to all of our supporters. Up here is an equally nerdy video about tuning. Have a great week and see you next week. Bye!